Hi friends, it's Belinda here from Be Making Joy and welcome to my channel. This is episode 16 of What Make, What Brings Me Joy, a mostly knitting podcast uh, from my home here in Calgary, Alberta, where I usually come to you every two weeks, but uh, since we've been traveling, it's now been three weeks since my last episode. So if you're new here, welcome. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. This is Wednesday, September the 20th. So happy Whip Wednesday. And today I have two finished objects to show you. I have progress on four works in progress to show you. One of them, which is a new cast on since we last spoke. And if you know me, you know I've got many more whips hiding in the corners, but there's four that I'm going to show you today. I also have in this episode the September Color of the Month from Ancient Arts Yarns because this is my first episode in September, so we're a little late on that, but I have that. I have the purchases that the, I made at the yarn store in Washington, D.C. And I have made my choices for the Stephen West Mystery Knit Along, so I'm excited to show you those yarns. So let's start with what I'm wearing. This is the Budget Tie Top by Hannah Schreyer of Key Lori Knits that I test knit with her. And she just released the pattern, so it's available on Ravelry. And I'll uh, link that in the show notes in the description box down below. And that's where you'll find links to anything that I discussed today. And you'll also find links to my own patterns and to my social media accounts. So what was I saying? This is um, the budget tie top. She called it that because the yarn she designed it with is budget friendly. I used yarn from my stash. This is Lion Brand Kobu that I put in mine. I, um, because it was from my stash, I ran out of yarn and had to substitute in another color. Actually, because I made it longer than her recommendations, I ran out of yarn. She, her pattern is a crop top, but it was easily adjustable. It's done bottom up. And yeah, so I examined the color wheel and looked through my stash and decided to add the blue because it was the most contiguous to the green. I don't know much about color theory, but contiguous means it's beside it on the color wheel <laughs> and it's recommended those repaired compliments might have worked better but I didn't have any actual compliments anyway uh, it requires a DK weight yarn her suggested needle size is 3.5 millimeters which is a US 4 it's an intermediate level pattern because you got to follow a graft all the way through uh, it uses some twisted stitches, some yarn overs, some one by one cable crosses. I really enjoyed doing it. And I would definitely make another one. In fact, my daughter has requested one. My youngest daughter is requesting one from that blue metallic yarn that's way up there at the top of my honeybees, honeycomb shelves, the blue metallic, if you can see that. Anyway, so we will be making one before next summer for her. And I also have some hemp in there, some coral and some spice colors that if my other daughters are interested, I'd love to make them one. Anyway, <clears throat> my next finished object is the ranunculus, which I will put on for you in just a second. So the ranunculus designed by Midori Hirose. I used Lime Brand Pound of Love from my stash in the colorway Lavender, which is the same yarn I used on my love note that Bianca is wearing here. And I told you I'd do a comparison. But you can't really tell on the mannequin, so I'll pop up a side-by-side -side picture of me wearing both of them. They're both top-down yokes. Top yeah, top-down yokes, followed by a little bit of raglan. And they're both written for a wide variety of yarns, fingering held together with lace or a DK, or as you can see, they worked fine with worsted weight. They are both designed to have a lot of ease. 
the ranunculus even more so but of course you can choose your own ease and you can see i went with far less ease than than uh pattern recommends and it worked wonderfully um they both suggest a six millimeter needles which is a us 10 but one calls for a gauge of 14 stitches and the other one calls for a gauge of 16 stitches so you'll have to gauge watch to figure out which needles you need for your own tension um, without meeting gauge you'll have no control over what your finish size will be so i definitely recommend gauge watching i myself had to go up to a 6.5 millimeter on the ranunculus and you know it's perfectly normal for different knitters to have different tension and even and different designers have different tensions so you should always check your own gauge first before you attempt a garment they're both written as crop sweaters but they easily guide you into making it full length as i did the sleeves are also very easily adjusted because there's no shaping in them they're just worked straight and then rapidly decreased at the cuff they're both that way um, this one has an I-corb cuff and the other one has a ribbed cuff. Um, the bottom and the neck of this one is a twisted rib. This one is just a plain rib. Uh, let's see. The love note starts the love note starts with a provisional cast on. So you go back later to pick them up to make, make the neck, which gives it more structure, make more strength. On the other hand, the ranunculus has short row shaping, which gives it a closer fit. So, um, they both have links to video tutorials. Um, the ranunculus does a few more stitch techniques than the Love Note does, but the excellent tutorials. And you'll find other podcasters have also done tutorials. Um, the bottom line is I think both patterns are very excellent patterns for beginners. I love them both. I will definitely knit them both again. Uh, next one, next ones I do, they will, I won't ever match the colors again, but I'll do a lighter, or I need a summer version, a short sleeve summer version. Uh, yeah, so that was two finished objects. I have cast on one more, which brings my whip count back up to 12. And out of those, I have progress on four that I will share. <clears throat> so as some of you know our summer was pretty quiet and uneventful but now we've been making travel plans again so my husband and i went to washington dc last week and i needed a simple project for the plane ride so i cast on a sock i worked the toe up and because i was cramped in the middle seat I just kept knitting, knit, 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 knit. I couldn't stop, stop and measure the heel. I couldn't shape the heel. So I just kept knitting. I will cut into it afterwards and make an afterthought heel. I've never done an afterthought heel, but I've watched a lot of video tutorials on it. I'm very confident. Um, this yarn is Patton's Croy Sock Yarn, which uh, I get at my lo local Michaels. And this colorway is coastal stripes and since it's self-striping I decided to stop the sock at the point where I was back to the color I used for the toe so that I could start the next sock in the same whoops toe toes same colors might be off by a row or something up there so as I was looking at the sequence the pattern sequence I decided when I get back to the light blue I would start ripping and then when I got back to the blue that's used in the toe, I would bind off, leaving me enough to start the toe with. And I figured I could pick another yarn for the heel. But when I got home and pulled it out of the package to prepare for this recording, I realized how little yarn I have left. I weighed them. This, together with the needles, weighs half as much as this sock does, so it's not going to be enough. So I need to go buy another <laughs> ball of yarn. I checked the Michaels website and they do have more of this color in stock at my local store. And yarn is currently 30% off at Michaels, so I'm going to rush in there today and get them before it's gone. Because uh, it turns out these are 50 grams gains, not 100 grams gains, as I thought they were. Anyway, um, I 
also took in my carry-on I also took my skirt because we had a six hour layover in Denver where I knew I could work on an ex a larger project. So this is my Ilana seam Ilana Seafoam skirt that I designed to match the Ilana Seafoam top that I released in early July. So you saw all that in previous episodes. I don't have it handy right now. Um, this pattern has been tech edited. It's currently in the test knitting phase. It's due to be released in the middle of October. So stay tuned. I, I knit the first sample for my daughter and this one is for myself. And as always, when I'm showing my projects, I tend to drop the stitches off my needles. So I'm going to make my full length will be 26 inches and I think I'm at, what am I at right now? Do I have a ruler handy? I'm at about nine inches now out of a 26 inches. I gotta get working on this if I want it done by October 15th. That's when I'm, my test knit knitters are done. One's already finished, one finished it really fast. And uh, yeah, so look for that in the middle of October. The Alana Sea Foam crop top. No, the Alana Sea Foam skirt that matches the Alana Sea Foam crop top that's already out. Anyway, um, it uses the DK weight yarn, uh, four millimeter needles or whatever size you hit gauge with. And I'm currently making this one with Nettle Soft DK from Ancient Arts Yarns in the colorway Amethyst. There's more purple. <laughs> Yeah. Um, you know, I also packed to take with me in my checked luggage the staycation shawl by Caroline Summerfield. But it was packed in my checked bag, which the airline lost. And they also lost my husband's carry on bag that they made him check at the gate because the luggage rack was too full even though his bag was far smaller than some of the other bags that made it onto a luggage rack. Anyway, it took a day and a half for those package, for those suitcases to arrive in Washington. They got lost somewhere in Denver, even though they had six hours to make that connection. Just saying. So it took a day and a half for it to arrive in Washington. In the meanwhile, we had to go shopping because we needed to look decent for the functions we went to Washington for, right? Business meetings and a cocktail reception, you can't show up in your jeans. So <laughs> that wound up costing us about 600 bucks. We'll see if we get anything back from the airline. Anyway, this is the Staycation Shawl pattern by Caroline Summerfield, who is also the owner of Ancient Arts Yarns. So she conducted a knit along the middle of August to the middle of September. It ended a couple of days ago. I'm almost finished. So what? I didn't make it in time. Oh, it's all right. Um, staycation shawl. It's, uh, the storyline is it's walking through her garden. Each section with different stitches it was very exciting. Each section was so enjoyable. And I kept thinking, oh, I could make something with that stitch. Oh, I could make something with that stitch. I love this last one. I've now got three more colored sections to go and then it's finished. So I think that's probably about six more inches. A musing sock needle from Angel Arts Yarns. It's just so soft and squishy, the fingering weight. Um, this is a color palette that she put together and sold through her store. Um, the background color is Irish linen. The color pops are purple sequins, glimpses of Notre Dame, amethyst, um, midnight clear, yeah, midnight clear, boldly go, and then back to the purple sequins again. There's the glimpses of Notre Dame. And the, the boldly go, I love it. Bold, 
we go amethyst notre dame amethyst bold we go oh beautiful colors the only modifications i've made is in this tulip section uh and a lot of people made the same modification she had she had baubles on the tops of the tulips am i showing you the right side of it yeah i am yeah so i've decided to skip the baubles instead i'm going to add buttons i have some butterfly buttons in various colors and i have some bumblebee buttons so i think in the tulip garden those will look cute by the way i have a little lamb flower pot that i purchased from michael's that i'm using as a notions bowl <laughs> and i'm filling things I also want to say thank you to Mona from our Thursday afternoon knit group. She gave us all a little ladybug bead. This I've got it pinned on right now, but I'm going to sew it on somewhere in that tulip garden section. Look at that. That's that. I'm going to pause a moment, catch my breath, and clean up and <laughs> untangle myself. The only other project that got some attention these last three weeks is the cloak that I'm designing for my daughter. There we go. From the Pokemon-themed yarn calendar, July, July yarn calendar from Fangirl Fibers. Uh, so 31 colors. 31 stripes. Last episode, I had just finished the gold, so we did one and a half more colors than that. About 15, 16 more rows have been done. It's over 400 stitches per row, and it's stocking at. So it's mindless TV knitting, but I haven't been able to find anything on TV recently but mindless stuff. So we haven't been working a whole lot on it. So it's a very much a long-term project. I've shown it a few times and I'll be showing it many more times. So I won't detail you. I won't bore you with all the details. You've heard it before. You'll hear it again. Um, just know that this is where we're at. Uh, I still haven't bought the yarn for the bottom hem, the button band and the hood that we have in mind. So when we reach a point where we need to make more decisions I'll talk to you some more about it so that's where that's at now let's move on to acquisitions <clears throat> I have the September yarn September color of the month from Angel Arts yarns and I have a few things that I purchased in Washington and I have my selection for the Stephen West mystery no long to show you so the September yarn of the month from Ancient Arts, a monthly subscription I've been doing since January. Their themes have been archeological sites from somewhere in the world. And this September is Rome Colosseum at dusk. And as always, I'll read for you the um, post they made when they released the color back in the beginning of September. And if you've already seen it, feel free to skip ahead. To my next segment so i'll read their post from their instagram page and i'll pop up at the end um the inspiration photo that they posted of the coliseum at night at dusk okay she says it's the beginning of a new month and that means it's time to reveal the next color of the month the september color of the month is coliseum at dusk rome the colors in this month offering are drawn from the skies at night as night falls, the stones of the Colosseum, the grassy area around it, and of course, the royal purples of the emperor and senators who sponsored the contest there. The next stop on our tour of world famous archaeological sites, the Colosseum in Rome, the iconic symbol of the Imperial Roman Empire, 
It is the largest ancient amphitheater ever built and is still the largest standing amphitheater in the world. Construction on the Colosseum began in 72 AD and was completed just eight years later in 80 AD. The Rome was definitely not built in a day. <laughs> the Colosseum wasn't even. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> silly joke, sorry. Seating was arranged according to social status and the emperor had his own section. The senators and their families were also close to the action in the first tier, followed by the rest of the nobles and knights, the equestrians. The third intermediate section was divided in half with the wealthier citizens being seated in the lower section and the poorer above. The very top section was for the common poor, the slaves and the women. That reminds me of the seating in the saddle dome when we buy tickets for the hockey games. The cheapest seats are, of course, way up there. We call them the nosebleed section. <laughs> anyway, back to the writing. Depending on the event, the Colosseum could hold between 50,000 and 80,000 people. So definitely far bigger than our saddle dome. <laughs> so it was essential that it could be filled and vacated quickly. The architects designed the amphitheater so that there were 80 entrances spaced around the perimeter. That's interesting. The north entrance was reserved for the emperor and the other three axial entrances, whatever that means, were reserved for the rest of the wealthy. The remaining 76 were for everyone else. Every single entrance, exit, and staircase was numbered to reduce confusion. And modern stadiums follow the same design, proving that ancient Romans had the right idea. The Colosseum has been used for many different purposes in the past 2,000 years, and given its amazing history, it has to be part of our tour. Okay. So that's that, the Colosseum at dusk. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And as always, I purchased mine in the sock needle blend. Okay, I'll duck that there. Now I'll show you the goodies I bought in Washington. Uh, a few tools and some yarn. I picked up a set of flexi flips. These are essentially substitutes for double pointed needles because they are bendy flexible. You don't need as many. You, you put your sock on the two of them and then use the third one to knit. I haven't tried them yet. I was going to try them on the sock I was working on. There, I bought 2.75 millimeters, which is what I'm using on my sock. But I haven't tried them yet. I'm not sure my first time trying them should be on the airplane. So we'll try them soon. So that's that. wonder what suspicions I would raise in the x-rays of the airport. <laughs> I had them in my check bag coming home, which made it home okay without getting lost. Anyway, um, I also bought, well, let's finish with the tools first, these little rubber tips to put on the tips of your needles to Hold them together to keep the stitches from falling off, keep the needles from getting tangled up. What do they call them? Stitch huggers. <clears throat> yeah. So I bought a set of those in purple, of course. <clears throat> I picked up a skein of black fingering weight yarn because it's so perfectly dyed. And black fingering weight yarn it's such solidly dyed, it's so hard to find. So I picked it up. What is it here? It is called Ultimate Sock. And I think that's Malabrigo. Maybe not. The code starts with M-A-L-A-B, I assumed was Malabrigo. Oh, there's the word, Malabrigo. Yeah, it's Malabrigo. Ultimate Sock in the colorway 195 Black. 
don't know specifically what I'm going to use it for, but there's, like I said, there's going to be a need for black and it's hard to find. This is a fingering weight, 420 yards. It's 75% um, merino superwash, 25% nylon, which is the composition of most of the yarns that I use. So it will definitely have a use. And then I found some silk, which I think I thought when I bought it was another one of these budget tops, budget tie tops. It's uh, knitting for olive. Uh, the color is blue, <laughs> blue tit, which is a bird, and it's pure silk. So I bought two skeins of it. Um, 250 meters per skein, 50 gram skeins. So that's that. And, and then I was attracted to this colorway. And they had a whole stock of La, La Bienne <laughs> May. La Bienne May which this was the first time I've ever actually seen it in a store. Uh, I believe it comes from France. It's a Merino single, 100% superwash Merino. And this colorway is called Grandma Mare, which is French for grandmother. And I'm not a grandmother and I've been told I probably won't be a grandmother, definitely not in any time in the near future, but I thought this is a, such a gorgeous color to sit on my shelf and I'll put, hang on to it until such time as maybe I get to become a grandmother. We'll see. But I love it. Another fingering weight yarn. I think at the time that I become a grandmother, I'll probably need another shawl. Or I'll make a baby blanket with it. Yeah, I don't know. But anyway, isn't it gorgeous? So that was my Washington purchases. And now let's show you my yarn I've selected from my stash for the Stephen West MCAL. And an MCAL, if you don't know, it M K A L Mystery Knit Along. And what happens is the designer releases a portion of the pattern every week for a certain number of weeks. So Steven does his over four weeks every October. He's been doing it 14 years now, I think it was. And this is the first time I'm going to be joining in. I've been following along for the last couple of years following his videos. He does a video tutorial as well with every pattern release, the pattern section as it's released. So starting the first Thursday in October, he'll be releasing a clue and I'm going to focus only on this project for the entire month of October and try to keep up. <laughs> we'll see. Four weeks it's for a shawl is a pretty fast pace, so we'll see. Um, he calls for four different colors, 100 grams of each color, so that's a lot of yarn. And um, when I started that subscription from Ancient Arts, I had in mind that maybe I'd be saving those and picking out of that for the mystery knit along, but that's not going to happen because for this year, uh, his theme is a geo gradient which recommends um, solid colors in a gradient from light to dark, four different shades, whether they be of the same family or whether they be complements or whatever, it's the same shade. Um, I chose, or I chose purple, of course. So this kit um, I purchased last year from River City Yarns when they did sell yarn. Um, they did close their shop back in March and are now focusing only on online learning. But last year, they sold a color of the month each month under a theme, Yarnicorn, which was a rare yarn. So they 
throw something unique, something rare for each month. Like one was a rare bird, one was full moon or harvest moon. I don't remember what they all were because I didn't buy them all. But this one was purple carrots and it came in three different shades of purple. It's purple carrots do vary in shade. So of course I had to buy it. Because anybody who knows me, I guess you probably even figured out if this was your first time watching this episode, I love purple. <laughs> so, um, so that's three, but then we need to add a third one. And, oh yes, I'll tell you what these ones are. They're, the River City got different dyers to do each month. And this one is Julie Ostelin. Ocelin. Um I think she was Canadian somewhere. I'm not sure. I don't remember. Anyway, this is a 75% merino, 15% cashmere, and 10% silk. So when it comes to choosing the fourth yarn to go with it, I want something of a similar fiber, something that's going to be just as soft. And I did find in my stash this one. Now, he recommends solid colors. He says if you're doing speckle, go easy on the speckle. I don't think that's too much speckle, is it? I don't think that's too much variegation. Um, he recommends enough contrast between them so that you don't get a blendy effect. So I took a black and white photograph. And I'm a little worried about the contrast between these two but seeing it now on camera is turning up wonderfully that's a wonderful contrast I think I think that's gonna work I need to do the gauge watch see how it looks in the gauge watch and then we'll see so this this other yarn is from Numana yarns based out of Edmonton I bought it at the gathering threads festival in Edmonton back in May this is the colorway that she dyed for the festival um, I don't know where there was a color name printed on it. She does a contest too, a naming contest. I'm not sure if it's actually named before. Yeah, it just says Gathering Threads Contest Yarn. So I don't know if it's something she still produces and gave a name to or not. Anyway, this is a 75% Superwash Merino, 20% Yak, 10% Silk. So not exactly the same fibers as these, but I think they're going to pair together nicely. They feel very much the same. So, um, yeah. Um, by, by the next episode, I'll have those wound up and a gauge watch done. And we'll see if it works. So my next episode will be in two weeks on Wednesday night, right before Stephen releases his first clue. And uh, I really hope this works. If it doesn't, I can pop over to Ancient Arts. They've done up some kits for the show, for the mystery knit along for Stephen's, because Caroline loves Stephen. And if. Or another option was maybe to add a black to those three purples. But I really hope this works. Okay, uh, we'll see you in two weeks for my next episode. I will have this staycation shawl done by then. I'll have this gauge watch done by then. Um, probably not too much else because I do have some appointments to attend to and stuff to do around the house. But... Then I will be doing a short episode every Wednesday throughout the month of October to keep you abreast of my progress on this mystery knit along. But I'm so excited to get it done. I'm so excited to do my first knit along, mystery knit along with Stephen West. Anyway, until next time, thank you for joining me. Happy knitting, happy crocheting, happy sewing, happy drawing, happy whatever it is that you like to do. Go find some joy.